that looks like the one. Ah, g'day guys, uh, time for another uh, Ask Jace segment. So today, I'm gonna roll straight into it actually. I've got, um, who have I got here? I've got Lloyd. Okay, Lloyd, if you're watching, how you going, mate? Um, what I've got here is, oh, they wanted to know, Lloyd wants to know, so Jace, what is that uh, brand of camp oven that you use when you're cooking on the show? I would really like to know because I want to get one. Oh, okay, fair enough. Um, well, here you go. This is going to be a bit of a spoiler, actually. Um, as you'll notice here on the front here, all for adventure, about that much. It's a nicely embroidered cover. Um, so this is a bag for the number one off the factory floor, all for adventure camp oven. And there it is, all for adventure stamped into the top of it. And here she is. You can see it here, this is a spun steel camp oven. This is the camp oven, and it's even got a little trivet in the bottom here, see that, that's pretty cool. This one obviously is brand new, so, you know, it doesn't look like my old one that I've been using. Now, I have been using a spun steel camp oven since, uh, since day dot, would you believe? Well, I'll tell you what, a spun steel camp oven is one that weighs absolutely nothing. Like this thing is made of spun steel. Look how, look how light that thing is. The conventional camp oven is made of cast iron, so it's heavy. It's brittle, can break. Not that they break very often, but I have seen them broken, mind you. Um, now, weight is a factor. Weight is always a factor. So this is why I sort of got drawn towards the old spun steel camp oven. And that's why we're making our own spun steel camp ovens uh, with the All For Adventure logo stamped in them. Comes in a nice bag, it's even got a nice glove. But I use the spun steel camp oven because one, it's fast and effective cooking, okay? Um, the lid seals on the top and creates like a convection oven, so a convection type setup. You only, if you want to, you only have to put stuff on the top, you don't have to put stuff underneath, as opposed to a, a cast iron camp oven, which you need truck loads of heat to get that thing nice and warm, okay? So I find this effective, it's fast, effective, convection oven type cooking. So there you go, uh, Lloyd. Hopefully that answers your question. And there's a bit of a spoiler going on there. Um, you've actually got to see the uh, first All For Adventure camp oven. Alrighty, so we've got another question here. This is an interesting one. Uh, Suzanne, Suzanne. Okay, Suzanne, if you're watching, how are you going? And it says here, hi boys, can you tell me what KG rated EFS springs are under the D-Max, thanks. P.S. Love the year series. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Suzanne. Um, all right, so the D-Max has got um, so a two inch EFS heavy duty suspension kit in it. Now, basically the first thing you've got to do is, probably not, well, I wouldn't be too interested in what I've got in the back of mine. It'll be more so what it, sort of weight you've got in the back of your D-Max. So work out uh, bull bar side steps. You've got an EFS winch in there. If you've got all those things, um, and then you've got a canopy on the back or a tray on the back, that would depend on what rating springs that you get. The springs that we've got in the back can handle a full load. So we're looking at around that 800, I think it was, it was around that seven, 800 kilo rating. But like I said, the best bet is to ring the experts. And the experts are EFS, you'll get to talk to somebody and they will be able to help you with your inquiry a lot better than me. All I can say is that the suspension that went under the D-Max was awesome and it, and it rode really well. So ask the experts on that one. All right, um, so we've got another one here, Lance. Okay, Lance, how you going, buddy, if you're watching? Uh, since you guys have driven so many different dual cab utes, what is the most comfortable and reliable one you have driven? Um, I don't know about that many, I guess we got 279 D Max. Oh, we did, Simon did have a, some Mazda there at one stage, but that's, it's a fair time ago. So let's get something that is, I suppose, current, and let's go with uh, the dual cab D Max, for instance. The dual cab D Max, I don't know about you, but I, I didn't, I drive it around when I'm at home, but Simon drove it on the show, and he had nothing but good things to say about it. So nice and comfy. The one thing he did say about it, it was nice and compact, yet it had that little bit of grunt and um, that it could handle doing some towing and off-road ability. So Simon said it was quite good. 
When I drive it around at home, I've taken it up the beach and done a few things with the D-Max, I actually quite enjoy it. You know, behind me is a big 200 series Land Cruiser dual cab, and that thing is a huge big limousine. And yes, it, it drives along nicely and does all those things, but sometimes it's, it's a bit big. Sometimes I like zipping around in the D-Max. So there you go. Um, a dual cab D-Max, quite comfortable and rides well. Um, and reliable, yes. We flogged the crap, or Simon flogged the crap out of D-Maxes over the last season. And don't forget the camera car. The camera car gets twice as much beating as Simon gives it. Those boys are hard on the gear. And um, it pulled through, so they were quite impressed with it. No dramas whatsoever. We got uh, one more here, Christopher. How you going, mate, if you're watching? Hi, guys, I'm looking at leaving from Darwin doing a Cape down New South Wales into Victoria later this year. My concerns is I'm taking my boat a 5.5 metre and was wondering, is it worth swapping the tyres to a wider tyre, same as the tow vehicle? Even though I add height, it is worth it or just run standard boat tyres, thanks. Thought I would ask the blokes who have done it. There you go. Sorry about the way it works. He's, I'm reading it as he writes it. <laughs> okay, what he was basically saying was, should I get rid of the standard boat trailer tyres and put some off-road, bigger off-road tyres? You know what? Hell yeah. Why? Well, I'll tell you what. That tyre you get on your boat trailer, like that's probably the cheapest piece of crap you can find to chuck on it. That's what they do when they do the boat trailer. Flick that sucker straight off, Get yourself some aftermarket rims, whether it be alloy or steel, and get a decent tyre on. I run 285.75 16s on the big boat trailer. Dual axle, so there's four of those tyres. Got a couple of spares. They're the Mickey Thompson 285 and the MTZs. You don't have to run MTZs, you can run ATZs, okay? Now, you don't have to go with such a big tyre, but the one thing I can tell you is that that tyre will handle all the road conditions that you give it. So it's a fair haul from Darwin to New South Wales, I'll tell you now. A lot of miles on the bitumen and tyres get hot. They get, they get worked under load, okay? So having a good quality tyre can mean all the difference between getting caught down at the three ways, if you're familiar with that is, in the middle of nowhere and paying 600 bucks for basically a $2 tyre back home. So get some good tyres on your boat trailer, mate. I would definitely recommend that. That's all I've got this week, guys, so keep sending in those uh, questions and hopefully I can give you the answers. See yous.